Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Ministry Hacks and today I'm going to show you a portable live stream setup overview going over some basic hardware and software that you might need for your production needs. Check it out. Number one, when you are trying to live stream and specifically in a portable setting such as what we do every week, week in, week out, we are a church, we set up in a school and we set up our live stream. Number one, protect your gear. Your gear is an investment into your ministry, into your business, into your life. So you want to protect it. Here's our live stream setup, all right? We decided to go with this backpack. It's a camera bag. We got, got it off of Amazon. We'll have some links for all the things we discussed today in the description below. But very basic is that we got our backpack here because we want to protect our gear. If you're going to buy gear, you want to protect it. And those just need to come hand in hand. This is a very affordable option. And you can check it out. It's got a tripod holder on the side. Clips in. Boom, tripod goes wherever you go. Nice and easy there. Got an extra pocket in the front for things. And then I'll open it up. Get a little peek in there, all right? But I'll go over all of these things in just a moment. So number one, protect your gear. All right, so number two, um, just going through our bag here to show you what we got. We got a tripod. We actually use two cameras and we have two tripods, but we carry one with us on the backpack all the time, wherever we go for whatever our needs may be. And so you want to invest in some type of tripod. We've gone with these Bosch tripods. They're super cheap and affordable, but yet they are durable, sturdy, and your camera is not going to get knocked over easy. Um, but get yourself a tripod so that you can have a stationary set up camera there. You don't have to prop it up on something ghetto like a box or something. Tripods. All right, number three here, you want to get yourself some cameras, whether that is a up, more upgraded version is what we've gone with, or if you get something simple and basic that's kind of cheap and meets your budget needs, you obviously need cameras if you're going to live stream it. So what we've gone with is the Blackmagic 4K pocket cinema camera, super it's pretty small, sleek, does all the things that we need and more. What I love about this option is that it gives us the ability to shoot and record in 4K as well as scale down to 1080p and anything in between there. So it gives you a lot of options. I'll have a video on going over the Blackmagic 4K and how we set it up to live stream our services. And so stay tuned for that. But we have two Blackmagic cameras. We have one that's a dead on uh, straight shot. And then we have one that's offset with an off angle to the side. And so we use that every single week, week in, week out. Something to note about cameras, you don't have to go with one of these options. There are many affordable options out there. You can even, with the setup I'm going to show you, you could even use an iPhone or two. Um, if you wanted to go that route and you didn't have the money for the cameras, use what's already in your pocket and use that to go with. So we got our Blackmagic 4K pocket cinema camera. Number four, what we have is we have our A10 Mini Pro. And this is probably my favorite part of the whole setup here. And this is what I would say, other than obviously getting some cameras and protecting your gear, this is what you need, especially if you're looking for multiple angle shots. What this is, it's a three in one. It's a video switcher, a video encoder, and a video streamer all in one. And it's all for like $399. It's pretty affordable. I know it's a, a little bit up there for those who are um, starting out. But really, man, if, if you're going to try and live stream multiple angles, this is your go-to. And so you have four inputs, four camera options. We have four HDMIs. So that allows us to have four different cameras, or we could even put in a computer input in there, and we could use a computer screen to make that one of the cameras. Now, when you're using this, you want to use this with an external monitor and it allows you to see all these camera angles all at once so you can have all four camera angles and then it also shows you your program output to, to see what the audience is going to see or is seeing in your live stream now a couple other things to note about this is that you don't need another computer with this if you have an internet connection and so you can actually plug an ethernet cable right in here as long as you do the, the pre-game work to set this up, you can put your stream key in here. It will save it. This is basically a computer, guys, um, is what I'm trying to say. 
but you put your stream key in here and then you're connected to internet once it's plugged in and you're ready to go live all you have to do is hit on air and it will automatically stream to your youtube channel facebook live twitch whatever you might be using there so that is a pretty awesome um, feature of this now another feature is that it has two audio inputs and so you can feed two audio mixes in there and then it gives you control on the board itself and so what we do so say you you know your live stream mix is good but maybe someone in the chat says hey it's a little low today i can't hear you well all you have to do is you just hit the up arrow on this audio mix and it will actually boost the master of that live stream audio um, which is pretty nice it also has some transitions we don't use those much but you can play around with those to where it kind of cuts in and out you can have a a um, another shot on the bottom of the angle where you have two camera views in the same picture there and so there is a lot of functionality here with the a10 mini pro and again if you're going to have multiple camera angles i think this is your best bet that you should invest in one thing to note about this is it only streams in 1080p but just be assured that your favorite streamers when they are live they're streaming in 1080p oftentimes they're streaming in 720p a lot of people think oh i need to stream in 4k well just a uh, fun fact is that most people don't stream in 4k they record in 4k they upload that later and so this streams in 1080p which should be more than enough for what you need number five is cabling this is what we have in our backpack we take wherever we go you always want to have some extra cables and of course the cables that you need and so we have a handful of USB-C uh, type cables and they're actually Thunderbolt 4 cables um, because here's a fun fact for you is that 4k is massive files all right it's massive so just if you're doing a church uh, service just to let you know if you're going to record that one camera 4k 60 minute service is going to be about um, 500 gigabytes so that is a lot of information that's passing from your camera to your external card and so we go with the thunderbolt 4 it has uh, speeds up to 40 gigabytes per second now I don't know that we need that fast, but we like to have it just in case because what I think is the worst thing that could happen is if you have everything set up, everything sounds good and it looks good, you go to live stream and you try to look back after it's over and you find out that one of your files is kind of, it's just not there, it has dropped frames, things are missing, it's a little lagging and it's all because a cable was backing up that data transfer. And so. Uh, we we go with the thunderbolt 4 you don't have to but i do recommend it and so we have some shorter ones we have some longer ones of course we have hdmi cords in there so that we can connect our camera to our atem mini pro and then we have up to 50 foot uh, hdmi cable so we can kind of set the cameras wherever it is that we want but we carry a couple of these in the bag of course we have our power adapters all right and we always keep one of these guys this is a macbook pro uh, charger because when you're live streaming and if, if you are using a computer uh, live streaming will suck the life out of your laptop and so you just definitely want to make sure that it is plugged into a power source so this one lives in our um, camera bag there as well as we have our black magic camera power adapters as well as our a10 mini pro power adapter because you just want to have power when you need it all right so cabling is just a simple thing often overlooked but uh, it can go a big way all right. all right guys number six this is external hard drives and this is if you are trying to simultaneously record your live stream while you are streaming and so with our black magic cameras as i've said before they can shoot up to 4k and we like to try and to take advantage of that capability since we have it and we record the service in 4k to an external hard drive while it is simultaneously streaming through our a10 mini pro at 1080p because remember this is not only a video switcher and a video streamer but it is a video encoder so it will take it from 4k and it will send it out 1080p but we record on external hard drives and we have a samsung t7 500 gigabyte hard drive as well as a sandisk uh, extreme this is a one terabyte hard drive and so this allows us to capture the data that we need there and we use a thunderbolt 4 cable to the black magic camera to um to connect these and these work great if you're looking to 
have footage, make a reel, make a short for YouTube or something of that nature, and you want it 4K or a higher quality than what your stream is, you definitely want to capture that on some type of card, external hard drive, and that's what we go with there. All right, number seven, uh, audio, right? You want to capture your audio. Odds are you don't want to use your camera's microphone because oftentimes that's just not good and it's 20, 30 feet away from what you're actually shooting, especially if you're in ministry. That camera is off in the back, and if you use the camera mic, even an iPhone mic, right, it's picking up all the noise around it, people sitting in seats, rustling around, moving, talking maybe. Um, and so you want to have some good audio. And what we've found, this is another great um, item that we have in our camera bag. Rode has made this. This is Rode mics. Um, they're very popular, have a lot of different options. They have made the Rode Wireless Go 2 mics. And so these are these little mic packs. All right. And it comes with a mic pack as well as a receiver. And so this is pretty awesome. What we do is we have a lav mic. And so whoever might be teaching that Sunday, or say you're trying to record audio on an individual for a a video, an interview, right? You can hook this lav mic right up to them and their shirt, run it through their shirt, connect it to the uh, the mic pack, and all you got to do is make sure this thing's turned on. Once it's turned on, this is the best part about it, is that this device right here starts to make a backup audio file automatically once it's turned on. And so that is super key because what happens if your A10 Mini Pro goes down or live stream goes down and it doesn't capture everything and then you're looking for that audio to put onto your podcast? Well, good news is the Rode Wireless Go 2 backs that audio up right here and you can get it off of this device to edit it and get that clip that you're looking for. Now you pair it up with the receiver is that this mic pack is the transmitter. It transmits to this receiver and what we do is we plug this in right you got your little aux cable to a quarter inch right and we actually plug that right into our soundboard and so we plug that right in as an input and once this is turned on this is now a receiver for this microphone and whoever is running audio for us can actually turn my mic up and down in the mains in the live stream in the monitor um, all from this and so all you really got to do you make sure that it's charged these are um, rechargeable batteries which is super sweet um, but it just it makes a lot of versatility and these are actually really affordable so instead of getting a super high quality high-end mic system uh, maybe you look at this as an entry level we use this every single week week in week out and it is a great option so Rode wireless two mics all right guys so that is our basic hardware setup but now let's talk a little bit about software that we use and this is software that I'll tell you most of it's free that you might want to look into getting if you're looking into live stream number one is OBS OBS is an open source software that actually lets you stream so you take your a10 mini pro you plug it into a computer um, that feed is going out into OBS and OBS will then stream to whatever channel you want, whether that's YouTube, Facebook, Restream, Twitch, Discord, on and on the list goes. And so you can stream to that. And in OBS, it gives you a lot of options. And it, there is a learning curve, but it gives you a lot of options. You can put lower thirds in there. You can adjust audio settings. You can drop a video in there and cut to a video. Really awesome uh, software. Again, it is free, just uh, OBS. Next software that we use um, that you might want to look into is Restream. So if you want to stream to multiple platforms at the same time, say you have a YouTube channel, a Facebook Live channel that you want to ch to stream simultaneously, Restream allows you to do that. They do have a free option that allows you to go to two streams. I believe the quality might be reduced there, but then they have paid subscriptions as well where you can stream up to 40 different channels at once if you wanted to go that route. And so we use Restream and we stream to Facebook, YouTube, and our church online platform all at the same time. And in Restream, it gives you some chat options as well to where you can see all of the chats in one window. So if someone's tuning in on YouTube and they have a question, you'll see it on that chat as well as the Facebook Live and any other channel that might happen. And you can answer that right there in the same window. Super awesome, super clutch. Restream, check it out. 
Another software that we use is Blackmagic Switcher because we have all of our Blackmagic uh, hardware, A10 Mini Pro and our camera. We do have Blackmagic Switcher software, which is free on the Blackmagic design site. But what that allows you to do is you can go in and you can customize some of the things on the A10 Mini Pro. You can adjust how bright the buttons are even. You can adjust some of the transitions there. You can even EQ some of these um, audio features, which is super sweet. Again, very customizable, very um, powerful piece of equipment right here, coming with that Blackmagic Switcher software that will just unlock almost unlimited possibilities. Next uh, software that we use, obviously we got the Rode mics, but you gotta have the Rode Central app. And so that is a free app that allows you to actually export any audio that's on the device itself. Um, real helpful, again, when you're trying to get those lost audio files um, and you're trying to put things together. The next one that we use for audio, we use GarageBand. So we run all Apple computers, we have MacBook Pros, um, things of that nature. And so we use GarageBand. It is free, it comes right on the Apple computer. So if you're using Apple um, and you're not using GarageBand yet and you're just starting out, check it out. Real powerful tool. GarageBand allows us to EQ the audio in, in our favor. We can add an intro track for the podcast, a little voiceover, some music, things of that nature. But very helpful, very easy to use GarageBand. Um, next one for our video, when we have our post-production, we use Final Cut Pro, which is an Apple product there, and it allows us to edit the different angles, the volume, color correction, add effects, transitions, all those different things. We use Final Cut Pro, but there is, if you're using an Apple computer, there is a free version, iMovie, which is very capable, and you can export up to 4K on iMovie as well for free, so check those out. Um, other options, DaVinci Resolve is a free one that's on Mac and PC, and that's very capable. There is a pretty steep learning curve if you've never used it before. Adobe Premiere, another one that you could use, it's a paid subscription um, that you could check out, but there's different options out there for you. Last and final one, here's uh, your ministry hack takeaway. If you don't know this yet, man, you need to watch this, write this down, but Canva, Pro. Canva is an app that allows you to create all kinds of different documents, graphics, all those things, thumbnails for your YouTube, for your Facebook stories, for Instagram, um, all the different things. And so Canva Pro is a paid subscription. They have a free version, but check this out. Ministry hack right here. If you are a nonprofit, a 501c3, and you are a registered nonprofit, you can actually apply through Canva to get a free pro account, not only for you, but for your whole team, which is super awesome, super grateful for Canva letting us do that. And we use that every week to create graphics, thumbnails after the fact when we're uploading YouTube videos. Um, we can create different types of artwork for like a, say we wanna have a connect card, you can make that stuff right on Canva um, for free if you are a nonprofit. So check that out guys. But hey guys, that is my ministry hack for you today. Our live stream portable setup, the basics. I'll have new videos coming out soon of how to set this up, how to run it, how to actually run a live stream and all the different software options. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next ministry hack.